welcome friends in this video we'll be talking about a technique which is widely utilized uh, by uh, cell biologist and also uh, the mostly by cell biologist and this technique is called spectral karyotyping for for uh, designating the different genes or different chromosomes that are present inside our body and also designating the responsible genes that are present in those chromosomes now this spectral karyotyping is vastly used for understanding that which part of the chromosome coding for which part which or which part of the chromosome is related to which kind kind of genetic diseases okay so we'll be talking about spectral karyotyping okay now what we mean by karyotyping this karyotyping term is common this karyotyping means simply we will uh, the whole uh, karyotyping means is a whole a picture of all the chromosomes that are present inside our body so it's a painting of chromosome simply karyotyping means it's a painting of all chromosomes in our cells okay so inside the cell there is nucleus inside the nucleus there is chromosome for human being the number of this chromosome is 22 pairs of autosome and one pair of sex chromosome it could be xx or it could be xy this is the system of uh, our sex determination in human being now karyotyping means simply if we take a painting of all the chromosomes in one figure we call it the spectral karyotyping so normally it's called the karyotyping of our chromosomes now by looking at a karyotyping or karyotype of a chromosome of human being we can tell how many numbers of chromosome that are present and also what where are when obviously their length and size we can also see that now one one important thing about this karyotyping is that when we do karyotyping with the cell chromosomes the chromosome must be in the metaphase of the cell division this is very very important so it must be in metaphase of cell division because at this phase only cells uh, are uh, in such conditions that their chromosomes are condensed maximum condensed so we can visualize the chromosomes without with microscope right with simple uh, compound microscopes okay now in this case so we'll take a snap of pictures by preparing a slide with the metaphasic cell chromosomes and take a picture after staining those chromosomes so it, it will give us a karyotype of all the chromosomes now the karyotype the normal karyotype of human being or human chromosome so the usual usual karyotype is simply black and white in color okay we stain them with different type of chromosomal stainers so you use those stains to stain them and we get different types of banding patterns there are different chromosomal bandings like z banding like uh, so the, there are different types of banding we will be doing a separate videos on the chromosomal banding patterns but this this uh, is a way of getting us this black and white chromosomal karyotyping now suppose if you look at the karyotype of human being or human chromosome so we get this uh, suppose this is a snap of this karyotyping and we'll get 20 different 22 different pairs so how, how it will look like it it will look like something say this is one say this is another this is another and this is say the x and y one very small and so on it will uh, provide a uh, many different mode of chromosome from short to long from different kinds okay so we'll get different things and what we get is different pairs so we'll be getting it in black and white mode only so we'll getting uh, say this is this this is this or uh, say this one this one so that's how the chromosomal karyotyping looks like so each pair of the chromosome you can get like this and we get also the sex chromosome pair totally apart so this is a normal karyotyping so simply it is called karyotyping but now what we need to understand is spectral karyotyping it is giving us such more advantage over normal karyotyping because this normal kind of karyotyping can tell us whether everything is normal inside the cell or not that means suppose in any kind of system if you have missing a chromosome or if you have an extra chromosome in kind of diseases like down syndrome turner syndrome like xxy type of syndrome in those case instead of getting one x and one y the individual get another x 
So by looking at the spect normal kind of karyotyping, you can tell there is something wrong in the sex chromosome pair. So that is the importance of general karyotyping like that. Right? But we modify this karyotyping a little bit more so that we get much more advantage using this spectral karyotyping. Now how can you modify this kind of karyotyping? Instead of putting one die, now in this case we put one or two dies and it will uh, stain all the different chromosomes. Okay, so suppose die 1 stains this one and die 2 also stains this chromosome. So die 1 and 2 stains all the chromosomes. So you get uh, distribution of the color is similar for all the chromosomes. So by looking at the color of the chromosome, we cannot distinguish that this is uh, the part of this or something like that. Right? So, in this case of spectral karyotyping, as the term says spectral, so we'll deal with the spectrum. Okay, different colors, range of spectrum. Now, what we utilize, instead of providing them the black and white, any simple type of stain, we provide them the fluorescent tag stain. Okay, so fluorescent tag or fluorescent dye is given as a tag, as a probe to be hybridized with the chromosome into two specific regions so that we get a fluorescence map of all the chromosomes. That is called the spectral karyotyping. So now we modify it. So modification. How we modify it? We simply add fluorescence tagged probe. We hybridize those probes. Right? So we'll provide the probes. For example, say these are the DNA sequences. Say this is a DNA. Let me do this. So here it is. This is with red probe and this is the DNA strand. So this is, suppose we provide them this red probe or we can also provide them this blue probes. For example, this is another type of probe, blue probe. We also provide them uh, red, blue green and all this so I also have green in my hand so let us do it a green probe so we provide them this different color probes right now this probe are simple stretch of DNA sequences as you can see small stretch of DNA sequences complementary to the region of chromosome now here it is the important part of how we produce spectral karyotyping now let's look at here so say the chromosome number one so say this is the chromosome number one okay so now, if this is a chromosome number, if we draw the chromosome number one in higher resolution like that, now this chromosome number, this chromosome must have, if we zoom into this section, it must have a DNA sequence, right? It must have DNA sequence. Now there are regions for in this DNA sequence and all this chromosome. We need to have a proper sequence of all these chromosomes for producing this spectral karyotyping. Get it? So we, we must have known all the genome sequence so we can only develop this spectral karyotyping for those organisms for whom the sequence is known to us the whole genome sequence is known to us now for human being we know all the human genome sequence so what we can do suppose this is the chromosome number one for example so this is the chromosome number one and we know the gene sequence of chromosome number one now what we'll do, we'll produce small probes. So this is the probe number one, probe number two. So that's, uh, and, and, and this is the process we produce more and more this red colored probe in this case. Okay. Probe number three, four. Segment wise probe is made so that say probe number one can come. So say this is the probe number one, it can come and bind. So if we, un if we, uh, make this DNA strands a single stranded DNA instead of double strand because the probe is itself is having the nucleotides so it must be attached with a single stranded DNA not a double strand so we must uh, denature the DNA to get the single stranded DNA so we get the single stranded DNA and what we do this probe will come and attach to this part and here it is the fluorescent tag and so on different probe will bind with different regions uh, of their complementarity so the designing of probe is really important and for the designing of probe we must have known the sequence of all the chromosome or of all the DNA or gene that are present inside our cell. So we know that we produce the complementarity. So here it is the complementary probe probes are designed sorry should be B probes are designed. Now after designing we just add them and we allow them for the hybridization of, with the single standard gene 
Now they hybridize. Now suppose we design these probes in such way. For example, say we know the sequence of chromosome one, and we know the sequence of chromosome two, and all these different. We know the gene sequence that are present there. Now suppose what we want, we want the whole chromosome one to be stained red color. So what we'll do, we'll make all the uh, complementary probes and tag red colored fluorescence dye with it. So that we'll be ensured that this probe, this red colored range of probe will go and bind with the region of only chromosome number one. So whenever we'll be looking at the microscope, fluorescence microscope, whenever we get the color red, we'll be seeing the chromosome number one. So by providing the t different colors, by providing the different probe, different dyes or different fluorescent tag, we're ensuring that what chromosome we are looking but by looking at this normal kind of karyotyping we cannot tell that this is that chromosome this is that we can only tell depending upon their length and structure but in this case what we can do by looking at just color we can tell yes this is this chromosome this is that and so on right so this is the advantage similarly suppose we take this color blue so we provide these blue colored probes to be bound with only chromosome number two. So all the chromosomes that are present in the, uh, all the genes that are present in chromosome number two will be tagged with this blue colored uh, fluorescent dye. So what we get, we get only the blue color from chromosome number two. Now if we look through the fluorescent microscope, the red colored, all the red colored regions will be made of this chromosome number one and the blue color will be the chromosome number two, green color is chromosome number three and so on. So we can we can actually mark with different colors. What we can do previously, which was a black and white painting of chromosome, now it was a, now it is a color painting, right? It's an advantageous part, right? So if it's a, in color, the designation is pretty easy. So yes, this is a chromosome one, two, and three, and so on. So we can designate them with different colors. That is the importance. So the modified picture of it will be something like that. So. So what we get, the first chromosome, suppose, according, depending upon need, we get this red colored. Second chromosome we get with this blue color. And third chromosome we get is, say, this green color. So depending upon need, uh, our need, we changed or modified this thing. So now I get this kind of color picture of all the chromosomes. Okay. So this is not only helping us designating different chromosomes or identifying different chromosomes but also it is having another advantage advantage to understand different types of chromo chromosomal mutations right how for example say if if let me discuss it so if the segment there are different range of chromosomal mutations we all know that there are duplication of chromosomes inversion of chromosomes and also substitution of chromosome translocation of chromosomal part now this kind of spectral carrier typing is very very important for getting the idea of substitution and translocation why because suppose what is the idea of translocation let me tell you first so it is spectral karyotype okay now so what is uh, actually the translocation? So suppose here, this is the chromosome number one, for example. Now let's say this is the chromosome number two. So this is say, uh, this is chromosome number two. Translocation means swapping of chromosomal segment between two different chromosomes, right? So it's a swapping of chromosomal segment. Now, for example, this last end or this end part of this chromosome, just cut out. This part is just out. And it is going and attached, and this part is also cut out. Now there is a swapping event. Swapping event tells us that this red color go and attached to this region with this blue colored chromosome two, and this blue colored end part of this chromosome two goes and attached to this uh, end part of this chromosome number one, which is red color. So after this swapping event, what we will get, we will get something. Say we will get something like this. Because the red is now coming and attached to this blue, and this blue is released and it is attached with this red. So now what we'll get, we'll get this kind of coloration changes, right? So after translocation, we'll get this kind of result. These are the hybridized results like that. So when we look 
the karyotype with a microscope with a fluorescence microscope but we know that we we provide the tags in such a way that only one type of chromosome will be pure with a color so suppose if it's a red it will be red in totally if it is a green it will be green totally so no hybridization color is provided or the principle of the providing the probe is telling us that there is no hybridization in color can be observed normally in the chromosomes. But now when you look at them what you observe is that one chromosome having the all most of the part is red but one part is blue and another one is the most of the part blue one plus part is red. It is telling us that we haven't provided any probe to bind with this type of coloration. So there is something wrong about this kind of chromosomes. So what is wrong? Simply, what we understand is yes, there must be swapping of chromosome segment between the chromosomes, right? So, if we get a normal spec karyotyping, normal spectral karyotyping for a human being, so suppose now let me divide this karyotyping for chromosome one, two, and three. I just simply divide it for this. This is for say normal people. But now we look at a diseased individual. For him, what we get? we get this kind of result. So, here we go. Say, we get this result. And this green one will just. So, now what we get is, is this kind of result. So, this is for a normal spectral karyotyping. For example, we take only three uh, chromosomes. But here what we get, is a hybridization in color. So this is telling us that there is definitely some swapping of chromosomal segment between chromosome 1 and 2. So this is the beauty of spectral karyotyping. So this kind of chromosomal translocation and substitution can be identified pretty quickly just by looking at it. And I am telling you the visualization is the actual and the maximum clue for any kind of research field. So what, what you visualize actually in front of your eyes is giving you the maximum confidence about this particular particular concept, right? So if we visualize these things, we can tell yes that there is something swapping event. Now how it's done is different thing, but there is the event. So this is best for getting those uh, translocation as well as substitution events. Okay, but again, what are the disadvantage of spectral karyotyping? As I've told you that this disadvantage of the spectral karyotyping is there are many different modes of chromosome mutation. This is one type which is only translocation, right? It is best to find translocation or substitution, but it is not good to find other type of mutations. For example, other type of changes like say uh, inversion of sequence. For example, this particular stretch of the DNA, say this is, uh, this is the stretch. It just simply inverted. So it is cut out and it is inverted. We cannot notice this inversion because inversion will never change the color of that particular region because inversion is occurred in the same chromosome. So any kind of change inside the same chromosome cannot be detected because it, it, can, it will not uh, result in change in the coloration. So you can only detect those changes which indicate in the coloration change, right? So inversion or duplication, suppose this part of the segment is duplicated twice, thrice, but we cannot look at it. Duplication can be determined if the duplication is, uh, the size of duplication is higher. So if you look at the length of the chromosome in both the normal karyotype and the disease one, we get the result. But mostly, inversion is not good for the detection, uh, inversion detection is not good for uh, this kind of spectral karyotyping. But it is very good for detecting translocation and substitution. Okay, so that's about the spectral karyotyping and I hope this video is helping you. And for example, if you take an example, Turner syndrome, chromosome number 19. So these are the examples of how, uh, in, in real life examples. So just look at the real life examples and that is the actual part of spectral karyotyping. And I hope uh, it's helpful. Thank you.